Well, good morning. Welcome to the Springs. We are so glad you're here with us. I want to invite you to stand and sing with us today. Come on.
It's so great to see you guys this morning. You can go ahead and have a seat. Well, good morning, Springs. How's everybody? You guys good? Look at all these coats in this place, right? It's cold or something. And I want to welcome you guys that are joining us online, and you're not wearing a coat, I'm sure, but we're glad that you're with us as well. And, you know, as we continue through the series, we're in the best year ever. Uh, I think everybody had on your seats here and online, you have access to a Connect card. I want to ask that you kind of take a couple minutes, fill that out sometime during the service. Great way to connect with us and us with you. And uh, we have a team that prays over prayer requests that go on these cards and help you take next steps in your journey. We're just really thankful you're with us. You know, it's interesting. Uh, uh, what was it? Last November, we did a series called The Divided States of America. And uh, in, in light of the tragedy that happened at the Capitol this week, it's very evident that we are still a divided nation. Um, and, you know, we said in that series that a divided world needs a unified church. And that, and, you know, we've said you know, you, we can disagree politically and still love unconditionally. And our nation needs prayer. Our, our nation needs healing. Um, you know, we have incredible freedom in, in our country. Peaceful protests are a part of that freedom that we have. But mobs and violence and storming the Capitol war against the very heart of our nation. And we need to be praying for our administration and our president and, and, and the transfer of power that's coming and for God to heal our nation. And, you know, it's one thing I was reminded of this week is that the power of prayer to move heaven and earth, we forget that. We forget that those words change our lives and the lives of those we're praying for. It actually touches and taps into the heart of God and the action of God. And, uh, you know, it, our greatest power to create change is not the words that we post on Facebook and Instagram. It's the words that we pray to our heavenly father. That's what is a catalyst for change. And so that means that, you know, this week, if you spent more time praying than you do posting, your words would have greater impact. And, uh, and this week, let's collectively pray. Let's, I mean, I don't know what your rhythm of prayer is and your time with God is, but commit this week every day to say, you know what, I'm going to pray. I'm going to start my day in prayer and I'm going to ask God to, to heal our nation. And, you know, I, I love the, the scripture in Proverbs 21.1 says that the king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he will. You know what that is? Remember that God is in control of who is in control. And, and you know, we've, we, we sat down th this week and we saw the direct results of prayer as we have prayed for Keith Duncan, one of our pastors on staff and a good friend of mine. I've known Keith for 30 years and he is in the battle uh, for, for his life right now in, in the ICU at Ocala Regional with COVID. And uh, so many of you have been praying, and, and those of you that drove up on campus, you kind of noticed we're all praying, right? I mean, as you drove in, we have praying for Keith signs, yard signs, lining. There's 800 of them on this campus. We have them on our other campuses as well. And, I, and I'm asking you, as you leave today, take, take one. Take one for your home. Take one for your business. Take one... To, those are there for you to, to say, you know what, we're going to take this home and we're going to let our cities know that we're praying for Keith. We're praying for God to heal him. And uh, those of you that are joining us online, you, you can come sometime during the day or, you know, if there's any left and pick up a sign as well to, just to, to let the city know 
that we're praying. And we've seen, man, we've seen God do some incredible things. Uh, last week we were celebrating that Keith was off the ventilator last Sunday. And, and then two days later, we were sitting down with Teddy and I, with Deanne, his wife, and, and hearing from doctors that he's probably not going to make it. And you need to prepare yourself for that. And you guys prayed, and you prayed, and over 100,000 people on social media have engaged in commenting and prayer and sharing for Keith. And that is, that's an army. And, and keep, keep doing that. I mean, the, 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 the miracles that have taken place already, he is, he's getting, I, I get reports a couple times a day from doctors. He, he is getting just better and better and better. He's on ECMO, which means he's on a ventilator and he's, uh, ECMO is a uh, machine that's used in open heart surgery that basically uh, helps his heart to beat and his lungs so that he, his body can heal. And he's getting, all of his numbers are getting better and better and better. And I'm praying and I'm asking you to pray with us so that the day comes that, that we walk out of that hospital with him. That, we, that he's back home. So you pray. And, and Deanne has told us over and over again, she said, I know it's the prayer of people that is changing the landscape of Keith's life. And, and so I, I just think, you know, for me personally, I mean, this one is very hard for me. I, COVID has always been, I look at the numbers and I see, you know, the, the people that are testing positive and the people that are in the hospital and the people whose lives have been lost. I see numbers. But today for me, COVID has a name and his name is Keith. And he's, he's one of us. And I'm asking you to join us in prayer. I'm asking you to, to, to post and share and pray. And, uh, and we'll keep updating you and updating you um, because, it, it, the, you know, we, we have prayed th through this week and it's been a roller coaster of emotions. But uh, for me, I knew we were praying that Keith would get transferred to Ocala Regional because they had an ECMO machine and to get him on that. And, and God opened the door to, for that to happen and moved in so many ways and and for me, that was, that was a huge answer to prayer. I was begging God for that. And so when I knew he was being transferred, I went and waited outside Ocala Regional because I wanted to see my brother come in. And I, I sat and I waited and I saw the ambulance come, critical care patient, and they pulled in and I walked out and I just stood there because I wanted to see him wheel him by and I wanted to pray him in. And just like I got the privilege of praying him in, we're going to have the privilege of praying him out. So, so that, that's coming. But, you know, so many times I'm sitting there going, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I can't do anything. I, it was, I, I, I kind of felt like, you know, I'm just walking the walls. You know, kind of like the nation of Israel when they were just trying to take down Jericho. They just circled the walls. They just walked the walls. And just saying, God... Show yourself faithful. We need the wall to fall. And today I want to, uh, no matter where you are, and you, and I know some of you, you're in a battle right now. You're in a battle for people you love. You're in the battle in your life. And I want you to worship with us right now and listen to the words of this song and just pray because great is his faithfulness. He is faithful. His promise still stands. And so I want to ask you and invite you to stand to your feet as, as we worship today and let these words resonate in your heart together.
for change to We're just so grateful that you are a God that fights for us, that you uh, come through when we call on you, Father, and we're just asking you, Father, to do it again. We love you. We trust you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You guys can go ahead and have a seat.
Nine o'clock service, can we give God some praise this morning? What a great day to be in church. Praise God. Man, it's great to see those of you at our Ocala Broadcast Campus and those of you at our Southwest and Villages campuses also. And don't feel left out if you're watching online. We're glad that you're with us as well. In fact, we have some hosts that would love to engage with you in the comment section in whichever platform that you're watching on today. Well, I'm Brian. I'm one of the teaching pastors here at the Springs. Super excited to bring you our third and final week of a series that we're calling Best Week Ever. Today I want to help you prepare for 2021. I want to give you three choices today that I want to encourage you to make in the new year that will help you to prepare for the best year of your life. Now I want to preach to you today on the topic, Prepare the Ground. If you're taking notes, you can give my message that title today, Prepare the Ground. I want to begin today by taking us to one of the deadest, driest places on earth. What a way to start a sermon, right? I want to take us to Death Valley, Nevada. Death Valley, as you may know, is known as the deadest, driest place on earth. In fact, so dry that life cannot be sustained there. They get an average rainfall of just over two inches a year, and that's in a good year. And so because of that, as you might imagine, it has the title of Desert Wasteland. However, back in 2005, an unusual weather pattern blew through, and storm clouds brought hours of rain. And I'm not, I'm not really used to seeing this in Death Valley. But after hours of rain, this was the result. Those are flowers. How does a desert wasteland become a flourishing garden seemingly overnight? This came to be known as the, the Death Valley Super Bloom. I think that's a great name for it. And people flocked from all over the world to come and see this crazy phenomenon. And everybody seemed to be asking the same question, maybe the same question that you're asking this morning. How? How is this possible? How does a dry desert wasteland become a thriving garden? And the answer is there were seeds in the ground. There were seeds in the ground. In fact, there had been seeds in the ground for hundreds, if not thousands of years. But the weather conditions, the soil conditions had never been quite right so that the seeds in the ground could never realize their full potential. Where am I going with this? Some of you already know where I'm going with this, don't you? Ladies and gentlemen, God has placed seeds in your hearts. And some of those seeds have 2021 written all over them. Now, I know some of you are kind of doubting this because 2021 felt a lot like Death Valley, right? Like the devil brought some conditions into your life that just felt dry and, 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 and like, a, like a desert wasteland, if you will. But I really believe, I just want to just kind of prophesy over your life this morning that rain is coming in 2021. God wants to do something in your life this year that would blow your mind if you could see it today. However... The soil conditions have to be right in your heart. So this morning I want to talk to you about how to create that good soil in your heart so that God can make stuff grow. And I want to do that today by taking us to a parable or a short story that Jesus told in the Gospels. If you're joining us online at one of our campuses, I would encourage you to follow along on the YouVersion Bible app. It's an app where you can follow along with our message notes and access the Word of God there. But I'll also have it up on the screen for you as well. Here's what it says in the Scriptures. A farmer went out to plant some seeds. And as he scattered them across the field, some seeds fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plants soon wilted under the hot sun. And since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds, on the other hand, fell on among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. And still other seeds, watch this, fell on fertile soil. And they produced a crop that was 30, 60, even 100 times as much as that which had been planted. Now, a couple verses later, Jesus goes on to explain the symbolism in this story. He says that uh, the footpath represents those who sort of have hard hearts, if you will. And so when God spreads seed on their hearts, it never really gets absorbed because they don't really understand the word. Maybe they're even offended by it. Then there's those with the shallow soil in their heart. Those are the people who they hear it, 
but they, their faith is sort of shallow and superficial. And so, so what God is trying to do in their lives never truly takes root. Then there's that third type of soil, the, the thorny, rocky soil. And, and that, that soil is a little bit deeper. And, but, but as the seeds begin to sort of take root, what happens is the, the temptations and worries of life begin to sort of choke out what God is trying to do. But then there's that fourth soil. Then there's that good soil, that fertile soil, as Jesus calls it. The Bible says that when the hearts of his followers are fertile, that what happens is that seed of God's word begins to take root and it begins to grow. And the growth in that kind of soil is unlimited. The growth in that kind of soil is exponential. That is the kind of growth that God wants to produce in your life and mine in 2021. What Jesus is doing here is he's trying to help us understand the relationship between seed and soil. See, a lot of times when we plant stuff and a seed refuses to grow, we blame the seed. But according to this parable, the seed is not the one to blame. The soil is where the fault should actually be found. He he describes to us the importance of cultivating good soil. I, I love this word cultivate. The word cultivate simply means to prepare the ground. Cultivation is ultimately preparation. And what I want to do today is give you three choices to help you cultivate growth in your heart. Cultivate growth in your life. So I I hope that you'll lean in and take good notes today. Here's why. This is sort of the, the bottom line or the big idea that I want to chase today. I believe that what you do with your soil today will ultimately determine what God does with your seed tomorrow. Let me say that again in case you missed it. What you do with your soil today will determine what God does with your seed tomorrow. Those seeds of potential, those seeds of hope, those seeds of opportunity. Ultimately, what you do with your soil today will determine what God does with your seed tomorrow. Here are three choices to help you produce that kind of growth. Choice number one is this. Choose service over status. What are you going to do in 2021? Choose service over status. In case you haven't noticed, status is everything in today's world. Everybody wants to be somebody, right? We want to be important. We want others to look at us and want to be who we are. The problem is so many people end up choosing status over service rather than the other way around and then wonder why their lives feel so miserable. When the Bible speaks of service, it speaks of something called humility. Here's what the Bible tells us in 1 Peter. It says, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. Why? Because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Who does God show favor favor to? He shows favor to the humble. Now, the favor of God is an amazing thing. Can I just talk about this for a moment? The favor of God is like fertilizer. It makes things grow. God's favor will create opportunities for you that you could never create for yourself. The favor of God will open doors for you that you could never open for yourself. The favor of God will make a way where there seems to be no way. But not only that, the favor of God will protect you from what the enemy is trying to bring against you. The favor of God is sort of like having God and his, his angelic hosts on your offensive line. Football fans, maybe that'll make sense, right? Listen, the favor of God is awesome. And who does the Bible say God is most likely to give it to? Those who are humble. And the Bible just told us in 1 Peter, the the way that we do this is every day when we wake up, we clothe ourselves with humility. Now, some of you, um, you you really like think through what you're going to wear each day. Like maybe you pick your clothes out the day before. I've actually had friends that like literally lay clothes out for the entire week. And like, you know, they press them, they, they lay them out, they make sure that they're ready to go. And they really, really think through what they're going to wear. Other people just kind of wake up in the morning, do the sniff test and go, that'll work, right? Like that's, 
Yeah, maybe you have friends like that too. Just looking at you guys, some of you actually fall into the latter category, I see. I'm kidding, that's a joke, I'm kidding. But, but I, I think like there are some who really think through what they're going to wear and some who don't. What, what First Peter is telling us is we ought to think through every day exactly what we're going to clothe ourselves with spiritually and that ought to look like humility. Okay, so how do we do that? Like if God gives favor to the humble, how do we just kind of make ourselves more humble? Humility, by the way, is not thinking less of yourself. Humility is thinking of yourself less. And it's about thinking about others and ways that you can choose to serve, choose service over status. Some of the most humble people in the world are people who decide every day to, to choose service over status. They're going to choose to make other people's lives better than their own. In fact, a lot of those people are sitting around you right now. If you're on one of our campuses, just go ahead, take a moment, look around. A lot of the people that you see around you are part of our volunteer army. They serve in kids' ministry, student ministry, first impressions, guest services. They, they serve on the parking team when it's frigidly cold like it is today. They, they step in and do the stuff that other people don't necessarily want to do. And a lot of times, here's the crazy thing. A lot of the times, um, you, you'll never know their name. In fact, like we've had a clean team that every week shows up and sanitizes all of our environments. I mean, they literally like spray down the chairs between services and you have no idea who they are. You don't see them in action. And, and you know what? They don't care because they're not trying to make themselves famous. They're not concerned about status. They're concerned about service. You know why? Because they're clothing themselves in humility. You know what else I know about those people? They have the favor of God on their lives. God's doing some stuff in them. He's producing some growth. Those, those seeds in their hearts, whoo, they're growing at an astonishing rate. Because that's what happens when you choose service over status. How can you choose that in 21? How can you cultivate humility? I would encourage you to take that connect card that Pastor Ron told you a little while ago about and just fill that out, but, but, but indicate somewhere on there that you want to serve. Step in and serve in our kids' ministry. I was talking to our, our kids' ministry pastor, Rich Murphy, this week uh, about how we, we need more volunteers in preschool. Not just warm bodies, but people who will step in and love those kids and be Jesus to them. Same in student ministry and a number of other areas in our church. Just take that connect card and say, you know what? I want to partner with the Springs to start bringing those seeds to life by choosing service over status in 2021. What are we going to do? We're going to choose service over status. But secondly, we're also going to do this. We're going to choose character over comfort. What are we going to do? Choose character over comfort. I've come to find that there are two types of people in the world. There are people who do what's right because it feels right. And there are those who do what's right because it is right. And those are people who choose character over comfort. Comfort. You know, when the Bible speaks about character, it uses a, one word that you probably heard before, the word integrity. Integrity is ultimately who you are when nobody's looking. It's the stuff behind the scenes that nobody else really can see. And look what the Bible says about this. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. Duplicity is ultimately the opposite of integrity. Duplicity is when we live double lives. It's when we, we live with a certain degree of hypocrisy. What God wants for you in 2021 is for you to live with integrity, to, to cultivate character in your life. You know, a few years ago when my family moved to Florida, uh, we got together with a realtor and we started looking at homes. Maybe you've been uh, in the home buying process before and you know how invigorating and how incredibly frustrating it can be all at the same time. Have you been there? And uh, I remember we'd probably seen about 15 to 20 different homes and, and we got to a point when we were just sort of getting hopeless and disappointed because our budget just wasn't affording us the kind of home that we were hoping for. And, and then at one point, our realtor took us to one house that was larger than any we'd seen before. It had a, a, a newly renovated kitchen. It had plenty of space. It was in a really good area. And I just remember saying to our realtor, I was literally standing in the center of the living room. I just said to our realtor, how is it that 
our budget can afford this. This is nothing like any of the other homes that we've seen before. Why, why is this one so different than the others? And our realtor said this to me. She said, look down at the floor. You see that crack? See that crack that leads from that wall over to that wall? That means that there's a foundation problem. That, that means that the integrity of the home is in question. The integrity of the structure is in question. I haven't forgotten that phrase. Because when we speak about the integrity of a structure, we, we're, we're talking about the foundation, right? The stuff behind the walls and under the floor that nobody can really see. And you don't really think about it or care about it until all of a sudden there's a crack in the foundation and things begin to fall. I just, I just wonder today if, if there's a crack in the foundation of your marriage. I just wonder today if there's a crack in the floor of your finances. I'm, I'm just curious if there's a, a crack in the foundation of, of who you are when you're alone, the stuff that you look at, the people you're with, the stuff that you want. Like, like is, is there inconsistent, is there duplicity there that, that maybe, look at me, maybe would put the integrity of your life in question? A lot of times um, that doesn't happen because we choose it. It happens because we don't choose what we should be choosing, which is character. We choose to live comfortably. You know, one of the things that, that one of my mentors, you may have heard of him, Pastor Ron, has told me from time to time is he says, when you're living comfortably, comfort, com comfort is like coasting. And when you're coasting, you're usually moving downhill. And, and what happens in our lives is when we just choose to live comfortably rather than developing character, suddenly cracks begin to develop and the integrity of our lives is in question. The scripture we read a moment ago says that God guides those with integrity. Who would not want God to give them GPS directions in 2021? It may not be that easy, but what I do know is this. God will guide people with great integrity. If you want to sense God, the Spirit of God guiding you and maneuvering you in 2021, then it, then it begins with choosing character over comfort. So how do you do that? How do you cultivate integrity? How do you choose character over comfort. If you notice that there are things in your life that are inconsistent, if you're noticing that there's some hypocrisy or duplicity, I want to encourage you to find someone to talk to about that. Maybe a counselor, a mentor, or a friend, but somebody who you can open up to and say, here's what's going on behind the walls. Here's what's going on under the floor of my marriage. I need help. I think so often we think that we have to just put on a, a good face and be superficial and okay, I'm fine, you're fine, everything's fine. But, but at the end of the day, that's choosing comfort over character. And if you want those seeds to grow, don't just do what's right because it feels right. Do what's right because it is right. What are we going to do in 2021? We're going to choose character over comfort. And finally, number three, the third choice that I believe will bring those seeds to life in 2021, choose friends over followers. Choose friends over followers. You say, well, what's the difference? In a social media world, here's what I've known to be true. Um, followers hit the like button, right? But friends hit the love button. That there's something about friends that goes deeper there's something about friends that, that stretches into your life in a way that followers don't. Now, I know that, that the wording here is a little bit wonky because some of y'all are on Facebook. And you're like, yeah, but they're called friends on Facebook. But can, can we just be honest? At the end of the day, they're just followers. They're just acquaintances, right? But the Bible says there's something about deep friendship that has a way of determining our future. Look what the Bible says here in Proverbs. It says that the righteous... Choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. Now it's not said, but it's certainly implied that the wicked, or as the Proverbs often call them, fools, don't choose their friends wisely. They just kind of roll with whoever's willing to roll with them. But, but the problem with that is the fact that over and over and over again, the Bible reminds us that our friends ultimately determine our future. 
Who you become is largely predicated upon who you befriend. Nothing will dictate the choices ahead of you more than the voices around you. So you've got to be so selective when it comes to your friends. Choose your friends wisely. In my research this week, I came across a number of studies who really back, that backed this up. Studies that said that if you, if you roll with people that lack self-control, 10 years from now, you will struggle with self-control. If you hang out with people who are unfaithful to their spouse and, and poor parents to their children, guess what? Ultimately, you will turn out to be a relatively poor spouse and parent to your children. But on the other hand, if you choose to befriend people who are responsible with their finances, who steward their time, talent, and treasure God's way, guess what? Ten years from now, you'll be less likely to, to wind up in debt and more likely to be financially successful. I could give you uh, example after example after example. But the, listen, the research doesn't lie. Who you befriend determines who you will become. I'll say this too. The Bible doesn't give us a lot of guarantees when it comes to success, right? Because God isn't necessarily looking for us to become successful in the way that the world defines success. But the Bible does give us a guarantee when it comes to friendship. It says, if you choose your friends wisely, ultimately your future is going to be in better shape tomorrow because of the friends that you choose to hang out with today. So let me ask you, who are they? Who are they? Who, who, who are the people that you could call at 3 o'clock in the morning when the bottom drops out? Who are the people who will step in when everybody else is stepping out? Who are they? Who are the people who can tell you what you need to hear and not just what you want to hear? Because followers won't do that, will they? Friends will. So how do you do this? How do you cultivate good friendship? How do you choose friendship over followers? I want to encourage you to take that connect card or maybe that, that, um, that worship guide where you can take notes if you're at one of our campuses or maybe just find something to, to write with or maybe even just throw it in your smartphone notes app or something if you're watching at home. But I want to encourage you to jot down six names. Six names to say, you know what? These are the people who I want to carry my casket one day. Now, some of you, you hear that and you're like, bro, that's kind of morbid. Like, <laughs> why are you going there? Because that's the problem, you see, is we fail to begin with the end in mind. And that gets me thinking, you know, like, do I even have six people that I trust enough to let step into my life in a deeper way, in a richer way? Who are the six people that you want to carry your casket? Because if you can't think of six names, you better lose some weight because caskets are heavy, man. I'm just, I'm just saying. Had to lighten them. I had to lighten the move a little bit, you know. But who are those six names? And here's what I want to encourage you to do once you get those names written down. I want to encourage you to just start making deposits into their lives. Start encouraging them. Start blessing them. Start providing for them. Start defending them. Do something to make a deposit. Because here's what I know to, to be true. One day you're going to need to make a withdrawal. And when that day comes, look at me, church. When that day comes, you're going to find out who your friends are. And unless you've put some investment in on the front end, those friends may not be who you think they're going to be. Choose friends over followers. Here's what I know to be true about Jesus. My Jesus is a really good farmer. He is really good at making things grow. Do you know that? And he has plenty of seed. He spreads the seed liberally across our hearts and lives. And that's true according to the parable that we read a moment ago. But what's crazy about Jesus is that he leaves the soil work to you and I. He delegates the cultivation to you and me. And what you do with your soil today is going to determine what God does with your seed tomorrow. What will you choose in 2021? How will you prepare the ground? Some of you really struggled to write down six names a moment ago. Some of you right now are feeling a little bit heavy because you're realizing you've chosen more followers than friends. But 
I just want to remind us this morning, the Bible tells us there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And that's Jesus. That's my Jesus who, who 2,000 years ago, before we had even had a chance to choose him, chose us. And he proved it by going to the cross of Calvary. After living a sinless, perfect life, died on the cross, a criminal's death that you and I deserved. And three days later, Jesus rose from the grave so that we could have new life and be free. And he did that, look at me, he did that so that you and I could have a relationship with him. Not a religion for him. I didn't say that. I said a relationship with him. Jesus wants to be friends with you. You may not have added him to your list, but he added you to his. How will you respond today? If you're ready to start that relationship with Christ, to be forgiven of your sin and, and begin a new life, a free life in Jesus' name. It can begin right where you are, right where you sit with a simple prayer. Can we go before the Father today? Let's bow our heads across every campus. And those of you watching online, I would encourage you to just put your coffee down and just take a moment to bow your head and close your eyes. If you're ready to step into that new relationship with Christ today, if you feel the, the weight of your sin and your shame and you're ready to be free, I encourage you to just quietly pray this with me. As genuinely as possible, say, Jesus, I'm done living for me. I'm done living my way. Jesus, I'm ready to live for you. Today I give you my life. I ask you to forgive my sin and set me free. Today I want to begin that relationship with you. Thank you that you haven't forgotten me. For the rest of my life, I choose to worship, follow, and obey you, Jesus. And I pray this today in your holy name. Amen. Man, good job, man. Thank you, bud. Thank you. Let me tell you, Brian, great word, and what a way to enter the year, man. This can be the best year ever, no matter how you feel in this moment and what's happening around you, God has a great year planned for you. And, you know, if you just prayed that prayer with Brian, there, there was this card, the Connect card I talked about earlier. Everybody kind of find one. Maybe you put it under your seat or down next to you or just kind of pick that up. There's a box there that says, today I committed my life to Christ. And those of you online, that card will be uh, in the feed. You can grab that and just check Today, I committed my life to Christ. And you could take this here in the room when we leave in just a minute and put them in the baskets as you leave. The ushers will have baskets. And, uh, and also, I, I want to update you uh, the dream offering that we landed December and we started talking about the opportunity and the opportunity to, to train and partner with 50 church planters that are on the ground uh, already in cities with teams, and we said that would take seventy-five thousand dollars to do that. And we said if we got more than that, we we got four churches that'll be twenty thousand a year to fund them and walk with them in this year. So that'd be fifty-four churches. I mean that that's a god size thing, but uh, it, it, that would have been one hundred fifty-five thousand dollars in the month of December springs. Just get ready to celebrate. You gave $194,000 to church planting. Is that awesome? I mean, that is, that is like now we're talking about 56 or 57 churches that we're going to be a part of and just launching all over the country. This is going to be an unbelievable year. And thank you for being a part of that. And you can continue to give. The more you give, the more churches we plant. It's that simple. It's easy math. So uh, if you still want to be a part of the Dream Offer, you can. And, and thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Uh, and because of what you're doing, we're continuing to expand uh, opportunities to take the gospel into cities all over the world and into this city and online. And those of you that are joining us, thank you for everything that you're doing to be a part of it. And the way you give, and there's different ways to give, and there, that envelope, if you're in the room, was here with the ways to give. You can text to give, or you can uh, give online, uh, or you can give at the giving kiosk here, and 
Thank you for your faithfulness in this. It's going to be an awesome year. And as you leave, this is what I want you to do. Drop off two things. Drop off your Connect cards and your offering as you leave in a basket in this room and pick up a Praying for Keith yard sign. Just stop as you're going out. Pick it up. You got a business. You got a house. You got wherever. Pick. Those are there for you. And I need them to be gone at the end of this day. And, and don't miss next week. Don't miss the updates because I'm telling you, we are on the front row of a miracle. And I can't wait to celebrate as we pray for Keith. So I love you guys. Thank you so much. Have a great week. See you.